agility, craftiness, and persistence. These are traits that make for some exciting guard passing. Lucas Lepre had them all, tearing his way to the lightweight division for six years straight in route to six consecutive world titles. But what's so cool is that behind these surface level traits is a guard passing system that, for the most part, begin with one single important grip. When it comes to the greatest passers of all time, Lucas Lepre is right up there with the best of the best. At least, that's what I had always heard. For some reason, throughout my many years training jujitsu, I hadn't paid much if any attention to him. I'm honestly ashamed that I hadn't studied him sooner because what I had always heard about him is most definitely true. Everything from his passing style to his technique is damn near flawless. He had this ability to be so mobile while maintaining an unbelievably low base, and to be so precise and textbook in his passes while also being so creative, as seen in his footwork and his occasional cartwheels. Luckily, I'm glad to say I've made up for lost time, and after having studied countless hours of Lucas Lepre in preparation of this video, I feel I have a pretty good understanding of his passing system on both a technical level and conceptual level. So let's waste no time and dive right in, starting with a technical approach. Every system has its checkpoints, or starting points, a position that the passer looks to initiate off of their initial approach, or work their way into as they look to pass the guard. For example, if you've seen my passing study on Tynan Dalpra, you know that a common checkpoint of his is headquarters, or what's commonly referred to as HQ basically a position where you stuff and squat over one of your opponent's legs. This is what makes him a mid-range passer, since much of the time he likes to establish his checkpoint in some sort of variation of HQ, as opposed to looking to stay on the outside for Toriandos and throwbys. From here, he begins exploring his many options like knee cuts, leg weaves, and long steps. Similar to Tynan, Lepre also operates in the mid-range, but instead of looking to enter into HQ, he enters into what I like to call the pocket. Now, it's not actually called that, but I don't know what else to call it, and since in this position, he typically maintains a compact and low base when attacking, a word like the pocket just makes sense for me, and sounds cool. Anyways, the main details to note here are his low or at times tripod heavy base, his left hand monitoring the far leg, and the most interesting detail which we'll go deeper into later on, his lapel grip near his opponent's midsection. In an ideal scenario, Lepre's number one option from the pocket is a knee cut like so, where he quickly enters a position and beats the frames, and pins his opponent's leg to the mat as he cuts clean through the guard. Although this exact situation is ideal, it's not so common because often his opponents are ready to defend the knee cut with frames or guards of their own. But because of the fact that the knee cut is arguably Lepre's best technique from the pocket, he has many answers for the common defenses and guards he faced, whether it result in finishing the knee cut pass or chaining into another technique. So let's look at how Lepre neutralized common defenses such as the knee shield and the leg pummel. And as you'll see, Lepre's approach to passing the knee shield and guard passing as a whole was a total opposite of rigid. Through movement, he would constantly look to go through or around the shield, challenging the guard in both directions. An effective way Lepre made his way through the knee shield was by walking his opponent's hip center as he opened his knee out to create room to get his elbow in his ideal pocket position and then quickly cut back through for the knee cut. Now, here are a few examples of Lepre going around the knee shield. Here, with his opponent out of position and late to throw up the shield, it's kinda hard to see, but Lepre drives his knee to the mat as he pulls up on the sleeve and circles around the shield to finish the pass. When looking to go in the other direction, Lepre usually stuffed the shield and transitioned into the leg weave. Now, onto the leg pummel defense. The way Lepre would deal with the leg pummel was a thing of beauty, showcasing a high level of timing and awareness. As the opponent would throw the leg in to defend the knee cut, Lepre would quickly re-grip high up on the collar 
and yank their upper body off the mat, forcing them into this sort of congested position. From here, he'd make his way around the guard and at the very least, chain into other passes. This leg pummel defense leads me to the next branch in the tree of Lepre's pocket passing system, dealing with the lasso guard. The lasso can be a great way to tie up the opponent and create an annoying obstacle for the passer to have to deal with. Unfortunately for his opponents, Lepre was well known for his ability to dismantle the lasso guard, and as for nearly any defense against any guard, the best way to counter is to not get stuck in it in the first place. For this reason, Lepre used details like driving his knee into the thigh of the lasso leg, flaring his elbow in and out at the right moments, and driving his shoulder downward, all of which created pressure to help make it really difficult for his opponent to establish an actual lasso control. Now, Lepre's lapel grip from the pocket, along with his constant manipulation of the elbow, was a huge reason as to why he was not only effective at preventing the lasso, but also at beating the lasso. This grip would serve as an anchor while he used his elbow and shoulder to pry open the lasso leg and circle into the direction of the lasso. He often then began to tripod to apply even more pressure and continued to use his knee to drive into his opponent's hips and lasso leg, flattening them out and killing their guard as a result. These details right here were the key to opening up a series of passes beginning with, surprise surprise, the knee cut. Here while in the pocket, we see Lepre back out and begin to circle to his right. Notice how he begins to assume a low tripod and pin the free leg, as he flares open his elbow to create an opening to shoot in for the knee cut. In this scenario, Lepre's opponent is doing a good job at blocking an opening for the knee cut or stack pass, by not allowing either leg to get pinned to the mat. Instead, Lepre backs out and circles just enough to be able to clear the leg and go around it for a Toriando. Lastly, as I just mentioned, another common counter Lepre used is a stack or half guard smash pass, where instead of knee cutting or Toriandoing to his left, he would continue to circle and pressure into the lasso leg. A cool thing about this lapel grip is that not only would his elbow kill the lasso, but he would also use it effectively against the De La Hiva guard, completely shutting the leg down as his opponent tries to transition between the lasso and De La Hiva hook. Here, Lepre does the same half guard smash where he drags his opponent's free leg past his hip and continues to drive through the guard and get the chest to chest connection to finish the pass. Lepre could also use his elbow to peel off the De La Hiva hook and look to knee cut and chain pass like so. Or he could just be, you know, Lepre and do his insane jumping De La Hiva counter he often did from the pocket. Now, although I've gone in depth into Lepre's pocket passing system, my intention isn't to go over every single possible technique, but to mainly give you a good idea of how he approaches common defenses with multiple options. If you want even more on specific techniques, then you should check out his passing instructionals on BJJ Fanatics. I myself skimmed through the Science of Guard Passing Instructional, which was great for learning his techniques, but honestly it kind of falls short on teaching the concepts behind his passing. Nonetheless, if you're interested, feel free to use my affiliate link in the description and comment section below, which also helps support the channel. For this portion of the video, it's time to take a step back and look at Lepre's system through more of a conceptual lens. By highlighting the themes of his game, I feel like we can really deepen our understanding and think in ideas instead of thinking in techniques. The first concept is chain passing. More specifically, I want to dive into what makes his chain passing so effective. And for me, one of the main things it boils down to is his leg movement and footwork. Movements like leg weaves, hip smashes, windshield wipers, shuffle steps, and shin slices. I kind of like to think of these lower body movements as the glue to his side to side style of passing. Here, Lepre enters the pocket right off the guard pull and pressures through the lasso. Now paying attention to his footwork, notice how he begins to stuff the leg and shuffle step toward the opposite direction, looking for a type of modified Bernardo Faria style over under pass. His opponent deploys all frames to protect his vulnerable side, but Lepre being quick to react 
jumps around to what is now the weak side. He then ends up back in the pocket attempting to knee cut. Maybe I'm just a jujitsu nerd, but when I say Lucas Lepre has some of the most beautiful passing I've ever seen, it's little things like this that really blow me away. When his knee cut gets blocked by the knee shield, with no hesitation, he stuffs the leg with his forearm and then shin flips right into a leg weave. I mean, come on, it just doesn't get any smoother than that. His opponent shows some great retention, surviving the onslaught, but it doesn't stop Lepri from getting the pass a few moments later. In this next example, Lepri settles back in the pocket after a near knee cut finish. He starts off the pass chain with a throw by, forcing his opponent to defend the now vulnerable side with everything he's got. Again, he somehow teleports into a smash pass and then continues to shuffle step around the guard to attack the weak side. Yet another example of some incredible awareness and footwork. After closing the distance, Lepri shin slices right through the guard and transitions back and forth between the weave and crazy dog passes. Although his opponent's able to recover and push Lepri back to square one, it's these repeated chain attacks that take a toll on his opponents, eventually allowing Lepri to break through the guard. One more thing I'd like to talk about within the context of Lepri's chain passing is his ability to apply pressure both on and off. Let's look at the clip from earlier where we saw how Lepri counters a leg pummel, but from a different perspective. We see Lepri enter the pocket and pressure in for a knee cut. When his opponent pummels to defend, Lepri regrips and circles around the guard. His opponent does a good job at freeing his pin leg and squares back up. But instead of staying committed to passing in that direction, Lepri releases the pressure and backs out just enough, making room to throw the leg across for the leg drag. He then pressures back in to close the distance for the guard pass. In this next clip, Lepri pressures in for the knee cut, then releases the pressure to Toriando on the outside. He then repeatedly pressures in and out before shin flipping right into the leg weave to pressure back in. The last and most interesting concept which I've been touching on throughout much of this video is the use of one grip for many purposes. At this point, I'm sure all of you are aware of the grip I'm referring to, and if you guessed it was the collar grip, you'd be right. Over the course of studying Lepri's pocket passing system, it's been extremely fascinating seeing just how many ways he can use his right arm to do so many different things all while maintaining the same grip. And I think this is what Lepri does that makes the pocket such a nifty position. All while maintaining the same collar grip, Lepri can block frames like leg pummels and knee shields, transition to the leg weave, stack the opponent, use the elbow to act as a pseudo underhook like when he goes for over unders and knee cuts. He can also use it to pin the hips and to pull his opponent's upper body in to cramp the guard. The amount of uses really is mind-blowing and insanely intuitive. So that's all for this Lucas Lepri study everyone. I'm glad I can finally check this one off of my list because I'd been meaning to get around to it for a while. The amount of gems and knowledge that I gained while working on this one is a major reason why I enjoy working on these videos so much. I mean, I get to analyze and learn from the best in the world while sharing my observations with you all. It truly is a win-win situation. As always, stay tuned because the fire content never stops. If you'd like to join my Discord where I'm always active answering whatever questions you want to throw my way, click the link in the description or comment section below. Peace.